good morning and welcome to Brands Hatch. It's a nice sunny day so far. It looks like it's going to stay that way, which is good for my nerves. But today we're racing in the 750 Motor Club. Uh, we're racing in Class C. I'm racing it with Christian. So he's got a red Honda Civic, uh, very much like mine. It's got a few differences. It's a bit more stripped out on the inside, doesn't have ABS. So there are some things for me to learn here. Obviously, I've driven Brands Hatch before. I've done a, a decent amount here. Probably the track I know the, the second best because, you know, I've done a lot of stuff at Castle Coombe so far. But this is obviously very different. So looking forward to it. And obviously, it's going to be a bit of a, a learning experience in qualifying. Me and Christian slightly different sizes so uh he's a lot thinner than me so getting the belts in the right position for both of us is going to be interesting for the race and how we, we do that swap but yeah so we've got 25 minutes of qualifying that will be coming up after we've got everything sorted christian's got a few of his friends here that know their stuff so they're all prepping the car right now the best thing i can do is probably stick some stickers on the side our names but nonetheless we'll be out there soon there's two events before us so we're quite early on in the day looks like we've got some bmws and maybe some radicals or some hot hatches or something. I don't know, but it's gonna be an exciting start today. So we'll be out there soon and see you there. So this was going to be my longest race up until this point. You would have seen at Castle Coombe and at Lydon Hill, the races were relatively short. We're looking between 10 and 15 minutes, which is pretty typical in the UK for a club level race. You're always sort of that level of length of time for a single race when you're running maybe say two in a day with a qualifying session. But this was, I guess, what you'd call a mini endurance race. And the longest race I'd actually finished up until this point was the first race I actually managed to finish in motorball, which was, I guess, technically my second entry, Brands Hatch, with the CMMCS a couple of years ago with Chris in his blue Saxo. We did a 30 minute race between us. It was shared pretty consistently between the two of us, about 15 minutes each way. And I guess that's really the longest race I've done. And I suppose you can still say at that point, I'd only really done 15 minutes as I have done for the rest of it. I had tried to do this race, this exact race, two years ago with Sam and his BMW for my university project. But unfortunately, the car let go on him uh, half the way through his stint. So we didn't manage to finish that race. So the style of a road sports race is 20, 25 minutes of qualifying in the morning and in the afternoon you'd have a 45 minute race uh, normally split between two drivers some people do do it alone you can also do it in a relay format i think as well so some interesting ways you can split this road sports race and well this was going to be my longest event technically even though i'm probably only going to be doing about 15 minutes in the car so it's probably going to be still the most amount of time i've actually been in a race car out on track uh, constantly during a race so before qualifying, we did a few things, make sure that I fit in the seat all right, make sure that everyone's comfortable, get everything clean, get some fuel in the car, and then we were ready to go out on track. So it's getting noisy here. We're about to go out qualifying. I think the green light might have actually just come on. Yes, uh, not quite yet. A few minutes, the cars are coming down. See behind us, Christian. He, uh, I think he's done a few track days here. He's obviously driven a car much more than I have, so. I'm looking forward to seeing how qualifying goes. Uh, thankfully, Christian's gonna allow me to do more laps in quality. So I'm gonna do like 15 or 16 minutes. He's gonna do the first part, get his required laps in. And then I'm just gonna go in there and hopefully just get as many laps in and, you know, get some experience with the car. I know it's not vastly different to mine, but you know, just making sure that I'm okay with the ABS, you know, and stuff like that. So nonetheless, I'll send to you probably inboard now. Christian's about to, Head out in qualifying and should be good fun. See you soon. So here Christian goes. He's rolling out of the assembly area down into the pit lane, which is, I guess is kind of like a, a holding area here until they go out on track until the green light is shown at the end of the pit lane. As mentioned, the qualifying will be around 25 minutes. Fingers crossed for everyone that there aren't any red flags stuff like that does obviously cause quite a bit of a disturbance to the rest of the day so sometimes when there are red flags you normally get sessions being shortened and maybe even cancelled altogether if it's near the end of the session so i don't know if that's in some people's mind to try and make sure that they don't get involved in a red flag themselves i mean it can be as simple as someone just going a bit wide and into the gravel or even just spinning on the track that can cause a red flag if you can't get going again so to try and explain some of the differences of this car you're seeing here, uh, Christian's Honda Civic EP3 in comparison to mine. Now, you could probably see quite visually from this shot right here, on the inside it's stripped out 
quite a lot more than my car, even more so when you look at it in real life. You can see a lot of the, the parts that are still left on my car from its road car state have been taken off here, so it will be a lighter car, that's one thing. Next up is also the front splitter, which my car can have for its current series, but because of possible restrictions of where we live and the steepness of our driveway, we can't really fit a splitter, which is as silly as it sounds, but that's going to be something that hopefully will be an improvement to the front end of this car, possibly a bit more grip through the corners. And then I guess probably the biggest thing that was in my head going into this one, and for whatever reason made me lose quite a bit of sleep going into this day, was the fact that this car doesn't have ABS, whereas my car does. Now, I do realise that most race cars, even at club level, do take the ABS out, because of course it's, it's quite weighty and it doesn't really have much purpose a lot of the time when you're going you know these slower speeds at least you know you're not really getting to the abs that much at least i'm not because i'm not going quick enough but nonetheless in the uk there's a rule that you need to do three laps in qualifying so we've spoken about this before as i had not driven this car at all as i step into it and drive out the pit lane i asked if i could do the majority of the qualifying session so christian did i think three or four laps uh, just to get comfortable with the car because you know, even more so than myself, he, he's very, very new to racing. I think he might have done just two races before this, maybe a couple of track days, but he's very new to this, uh, even more so than myself. So uh, it's definitely a rookie team, I guess you'd call us. Uh, maybe even, I don't even count as a rookie at this point, I don't know, but definitely in this car I am. But regardless, Christian needed some laps to get acclimatised to the car once again after not driving it for, I think, a month and a half. And then maybe even more than that actually maybe even nearly two months and i needed to obviously get as much time as possible just to learn the car because i you know i realized it was going to be in some way similar but in a lot of ways it was actually going to be completely different to my car and of course there's a completely different sensation about driving someone else's car because it's not yours and you need to drive it differently well i feel like i need to drive it differently because of it i think that's a mental barrier that i need to try and overcome when racing because of course these are all things that are holding you back, or at least holding me back, and I guess some people just don't have that, which is, I guess is probably good in terms of motorsport, because you want to, to not have that any sort of resistance in your mind, you want to be able to just sort of go for it and try and find uh, the limits as a driver, even at an amateur level, you want to try and do your best, but for whatever reason I have all these mental barriers in my head to, to overcome when doing something new for the first time, and even when it's like this, I mean a lot of the parts of this event I've done before but for some reason uh, my mind's not letting it be that easy so regardless Christian's done a few laps here he's pulling into the pit lane there's me standing a little bit nervously at the side so Christian will jump out will swap over uh, he's taking the steering wheel off something that my car doesn't do so in these sort of events at least that's very helpful so you can see a little bit of a replay here I'm a little bit I guess slow in this whole scenario here, I mean I guess I could be a little bit quicker in and out of the car, getting in a bit quicker, but it took a few minutes and I got in and the guys pushed me out and then I was ready to go. And then for whatever reason I'm a bit slow getting away here, you know, just costing myself like 10-15 seconds, which you know is all valuable, I could miss out on a, a lap at the end of this session because of it, but regardless, pulling out the pit lane here quite tentative as I roll down the pit lane here I think I went for the did I go for the indicators or something there I think I might have gone for the indicators uh, which obviously I have the stalks either side of my steering wheel I went for it and it wasn't there because it's on the dash in the middle all these little things all these little tiny things that's different to my car and you can see a very nervous Alex driving out the end of the pit lane here to try and complete a few laps so uh, I need to be honest with you here we actually had some issues with the GoPros, which probably are my fault. So unfortunately, the only footage we have is from qualifying, from the inboard perspective. So I'll play it throughout to keep the narrative of the video going, but unfortunately all of this footage is from qualifying, just to let you know. But, as always, good friend, man that keeps these videos together in a lot of ways, John is doing his best around the circuit covering loads of different locations to shoot footage throughout the weekend my dad was there as well shooting some video as well because he wasn't having to be on the spanners so it was a nice weekend for both now i do actually have some reference lap times for myself because i drove my car around this track i guess similar enough conditions it was dry it had been a good day and it was the first time i'd ever driven my car my race car it was a track day around brands hatch um, just after the summer I guess of 2020 
before my first race and I knew myself that I was able to do like a I think it was like a high 57 which I know isn't particularly good but I had that in the back of my head like I know that's the lap time I can do in the same car and that was my first ever track time in my car so I was hoping there was going to be some sort of improvement since then but regardless not sure what's going on here I think possibly one of the cars stalled I can't remember who it, who it was here but there was the, there was the incident up at Druid's hairpin I think a safety car had came out which is slightly peculiar for a qualifying session and then I guess everyone was slowing down to a crawl and someone stopped and then couldn't get going again it was stalled or the engine just cut out at the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend which is probably the worst place for it to happen because of course you know Paddock Hill Bend is uh, well, the hill up to Druids is very very steep so very unfortunate from them but they managed to get going again we managed to get going again and I got uh, got some laps in towards the end of this session but you can see the race logic in the middle of the screen so that was something I was keeping an eye out here for this whole session I mean I'm, I guess I'm just looking at my mirrors way too much I think it's part of that mental thing I was talking about just I just couldn't I just couldn't get into it this weekend I have no idea why it's it was the toughest weekend I'd had for racing since I started. Not because I was slow, which I was, but just there was something else that just wasn't just wasn't falling into place. It wasn't wasn't clicking, and I think partly that was maybe being in a new car and all that, and the worry about driving someone else's car and knowing that I don't want to have any incidents with Christian's car, especially because of course he's put a lot of effort into this. But for some reason there was an extra barrier for me today, this weekend. I just I couldn't break it down. I couldn't I couldn't go to that next step. And this is just this is basically just driving around. I'd like, I guess is the best way of putting it. It's not even like racing round or hot lapping round. It's just driving. It's nothing nothing good at all. I mean, look, there's a a Clio in our class just driving past me like I'm not there. So in terms of that race logic in the middle of the screen, I I saw that into here turn one I was losing a second a lot of my time through turn one I wasn't very happy after that so there we go qualifying done here we're currently on the lunch break I thought it would be the, the quietest time to record this uh, interesting experience for me um, struggling to stick it up to speed really nothing nothing special just obviously a new car to me so I didn't want to go too gung-ho out of the pit lane so uh, yeah, I'm just taking this as an experience, really. I mean, I guess technically this is testing because obviously I haven't driven this car at all as I set out the pit lane. So I just wanted to be cautious, obviously. You know, it's Christine's car. It's not my car, so I've got to treat it, you know, slightly different to the way I can possibly treat mine. I don't know. But um, yeah, the race is coming up. Still pretty hot. I think it will probably stay this way for the whole race. There's no, I don't want to jinx it, but currently no threat of rain. But uh, yeah, so qualifying positions. I think we were right near the bottom of the class. I think there was one car behind us in class. I've got quite a big uh, big field of cars in class C and there are some really quick cars in there as well. So maybe that's, you know, accentuated that gap a little bit, but I don't know. I don't think we were expecting to be battling for like top five in our class anyway, but you know, maybe in the race, you know, things happen, pit strategy happens. Maybe we can get into the top 10 in class. That'd be quite cool. I think 38 cars qualified. So I'm not sure how many are gonna race. I'm, I think there are a few reserves out there in quality. I think that's how it works. So we'll see how many race. Uh, we've got to do some practice driver swaps and just a few things on the car with Christian and his friends here. So I'll let them do that and I'll get ready. I think I'm going second. Uh, Christian's going to do the first 30 minutes of the race and I'll jump in for the last 15 or something like that. Yeah, let's get ready to go. So after qualifying, I did something that we don't normally do is actually look back at some of the footage that we got from the onboard. So I record all of my races, you know that from my, from my channel, I do that as one reason, but also to look back at it myself and try and improve. But unfortunately it wasn't the best viewing because I was just really struggling. You could see visibly into turn one, just not confident whatsoever. I wasn't committed to the turn in, I was sort of shuffling it around quite a bit and not even using the full amount of the track either, which that's a that's a simple thing which I should have should have picked up by now, but it is what it is, I can't go back and change it now, but quite frustrated at myself looking back at the qualifying session, but I always try and remind myself and look at these in a bit more of a positive light. Very lucky to be doing this at all. Like I realise this isn't the easiest thing to get into. 
in the UK, I don't know whether it's the same all around the world, but you know, even club level motorsports quite expensive here, and you need to put a lot of finances aside to get to that one place. So it takes a lot of commitment to even get to that stage. So I always try, you know, I'm trying to remind myself now at least that you're in a lucky position here. Don't don't keep complaining. Of course, it was a frustrating situation to to not really get what I wanted out of it, but. You know, can't change any of it now. We've got to just try and look at this as a, a scenario to try and learn from in the future. So, we were getting ready for the race now, 45 minutes ahead of us. We were thinking about possible strategies for the race because, there are, you know, there's not that much option out there. But we decided that Christian would start. He would do the first nearly half an hour, sort of say 26, 27 minutes, then come into the pit lane, change over to me, and I'll do like 15 or 17 minutes to, to finish off the race, depending on where we're at. So you can see here a really big grid of cars. Something about the 750 Road Sports, which is absolutely fantastic, is the grid size. So look at this. I mean, I think we're looking at, well, I think we're pushing like 40 cars or something, which is really crazy. So you can see there we're quite near the back of the grid, which is, what we expected, uh, I think we're sort of, not the, not the back Class C car, but one of the last few Class C cars, and I think there's only like two Class D cars out there, so overall we can see here as we're going down to turn one, Christian does a good job keeping out of any of the normal lap one kerfuffles, and he actually did a really good job at keeping on the back of some of the cars that qualified ahead of us, so we didn't have the pace over one lap, or I should say, well I definitely didn't, Christian unfortunately didn't get in a lap time to, to put us that high up either but still I think that just shows a really competitive class C field within road sports as well so you can see this group of cars ahead of us I think from that grey grey silver MX-5 backwards we were we weren't that far off I, mean, I should say Christian wasn't that far off their pace so he was able to sort of keep up with them that Hyundai the BMW the MX-5 as I mentioned he was quick enough to sort of keep with them over over the race until I took over but as I mentioned the onboard stuff we do have is from qualifying I just like to slip it in there now and again just so you can sort of see the track and the conditions the conditions didn't really change between qualifying and the race people were saying that the conditions were a little bit weird I mean I mean I, I didn't really know what to think really I, I didn't really know much difference so I can't really be using that as an excuse myself but some people were just saying it was a slightly slippery surface that they weren't used to. Um, some, some weren't saying anything, some were just saying it was normal, but that's what the, the vibe we got from a couple of the people out there racing. But Christian did a really good job in these opening laps, keeping it consistent, keeping it on the road, and keeping up with some of the cars ahead of us in Class C. Did a really good, solid job there, and it was nice to see. I was watching from the pit lane, obviously, and I could see him keeping up with the people in front, and I was like, he's done a really good job here, because we know that this car, and with us behind the wheel as uh, relative rookies, we, we probably can't keep up with these guys over a race distance, but you know, over these opening few laps, it was really nice to see Christian putting in some consistent lap times and keeping up with these guys. And you can see there was some oil put down there in this, this session. This was the qualifying, as I mentioned, and that possibly contributed to the the, the possibly slightly slippier surface than the normal. But overall, a really good job by Christian. He did a nice job early on, and uh, you know that was that was confidence, I think, for him to see how quick he was in the early stages. But unfortunately for Christian, he did have a moment in the middle of his stint. From the footage that we have, it looks like the rear end really let go on him. And he did a really good job to keep it out of the barrier. He went into that part of the gravel at quite a high speed. So did a really good job to get out there, but also stay out of the barrier and, and get home at the end of this race. It was a bit of a scary moment. And he did actually say afterwards, I mean, we don't have any sort of radio communication but after the race was done, he was saying he wasn't particularly happy with how the car was feeling. It just, it didn't quite feel right. He had done a Silverstone race, as I said, about a month and a half, two months prior. 
had got a podium in the track day trophy so within that series of regulations at least that this car is a bit more competitive but still the car was all feeling quite good for him even with some slippy conditions there but he was saying around Brands Hatch today didn't just didn't feel quite right now I didn't really know any difference so I was just sort of treating this maybe not the right way but I was just going really cautious which I know isn't ideal I mean that's that's where you want the track day beforehand and he saw that going to turn one it was a little bit squirrely on the brakes the final part of the brakes and I think that sort of got in my head and meant that I didn't I didn't anyway push anywhere near to 100% and on reflection that's a disappointment but still it was a, a really important experience for me I think because obviously at this point got very used to my car and the way about racing that starting to get there hopefully a little bit with the speed but in terms of learning other cars you need to have that sort of experience to broaden your knowledge of motorsport in general. mentioned it before already in this video but unfortunately my approach to motorsport was always start off quite steadily and build up over time I I don't have it in me right now to sort of get out there and hit 100% straight away or hit a 90% straight away or even hit 80% straight away it's something that for whatever reason just maybe the way that my mind works it just takes me a bit of time to get used to it and ideally you're not learning all of this in a qualifying session or a race you're doing it in a test day but because of the way that Christian's work and my work line up it's it's nearly impossible to to get something off midweek as well as doing a race weekend in the same sort of area of time it's just stuff's too busy he works for Jaguar and Formula E I'm working at Formula One and you know combining those two calendars together means that it's pretty busy there's not much space in uh, in there at all so it is what it is Hopefully I can look back on this footage that we do have right here in the upcoming races that we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing some in the future, which is, is exciting for me. I'm looking forward to getting back out there and hopefully proving to myself that I can do a bit better than this. I actually am looking forward to seeing how it will go in other series that we're going to be doing. So in the 750 Motor Club, the car doesn't quite suit. It's just not power to weight. It's not quite there. There are other cars that are really pushing the limit of classes, whereas we're quite near the back in terms of what you can use in power to weight but then at the same time putting in the ballast to go in the class below is also not worth it it's a lot of time effort and money that you don't really want to be putting in to put in ballast so it's a bit of a weird one but we all wanted this as an experience so we're all happy to be a part of this grid it's a fantastic grid of cars to be a part of some really competitive racing as well so i think it both did us some good being here today as weird as that sounds considering neither of us are optimizing I guess the opportunity of driving this car out on the track because we're struggling in different ways here. Christian was struggling a bit with the car and adapting to it after you know Silverstone, different class, different cars he's racing against, and me full stop just learning how to drive it. So overall, I was I was happy with. I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, I guess that's the best way of putting it. I mean, I wasn't really ha I guess happy with the result. Let's say because of course it's it's hard to be happy with the result when you're struggling and you're. You know towards the back but in terms of just enjoyment you know it was there there are moments in the race unfortunately as i said we don't have that footage to show you but there were moments in the race where i was really get into it i really really enjoyed it and for some reason i thought there was going to be some sort of safety car to bunch the back up i thought there was going to be a bit of respite in here at all but no there wasn't 45 minutes flat out lights the flag cars did have to retire pull off to the side of the track and stuff but you know because everyone was really well behaved and respected really well the the warnings and all of the advice you're given when you know completing your arts test for example and getting to this point you know people pulled off in safe places they were able to return to the pit lane a really great respectful grid of drivers here in the 70, uh, 750 motorsport uh, road sports series so it was nice to be a part of that even though of course the result wasn't going our way it was nice to be within a grid of really respectful drivers so that was really good and that obviously made a tough weekend a bit better there but nonetheless, i got to say, the weekend as a whole was tough. It's pretty clear and evident that that's the case. But in terms of me looking back at it now, 
I think because of all the, the sort of mental struggles I was going through this weekend, it's hard to to look back at it and be absolutely buzzing because of course nothing particularly went our way. But a really important experience I think for me to go through and because this event actually took place a while ago, I've actually taken part in my next event since. And I think some of the lessons learned here today really helped me get out there. A bit of a change in mindset really, really helped me look forward rather than focusing on any sort of struggles I was having and try and enjoy it a bit more. I know that sounds really silly, but I think the thing is with motorsport, everything is tied down to a result. So all the time you're looking at yourself and saying, how can I get an extra few in my case seconds here how can I gain that time ideally it's you know tenths of a second that you're trying to gain but for me it was a lot but this experience of struggling really allowed me to go into the next event and just enjoy it a lot more and that sounds really silly changing up that mindset and the attitude going to a race the weekend really really helped uh, regardless we came home we, we got the checker flag which I think is obviously one of the most important things uh, we finished the race in 25th place after qualifying in 35th place so obviously a couple of cars retired some gains in, in, in position as well so I think you know we were overall quite happy with that nice to see some progression there Christian got his lap, down, uh, lap time down quite significantly as well so whilst it was a tough one I think we can look back on it and say that it was a, a productive weekend in terms of we know what to change going forward. And for me, personally, mentally, I know what to change that in that side to, to try and improve and get better for the next one. So a massive thank you to Christian and all of his guys that came out and made sure that we got out on track and actually managed to do some laps and uh, were competitive with a few cars towards the back of the class. So I guess that's, that's pretty important. Uh, I can ap only apologise to Christian that I wasn't able to to maximise myself and my driving because I know I can give a, I, you know, I'm, I know I'm not great, but I know I can give better than that, which is obviously a bit disappointing. But yeah, I enjoyed the weekend uh, regardless, and I think it's important going forward to the next one. I can't remember when the next race is. I think it's maybe in the start of August sometime that we're going to be doing the next road sports race uh, in our calendar at least. And I think we've also got some track day trophy stuff at some point, which I'm looking forward to. Might be a bit more competitive in class. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it and uh, I'll see you soon for another racing video. Goodbye.